Thank you, Mr. President, Mr. President, Mr. Secretary General, Excellencies, distinguished delegates. Allow me first to extend the deep appreciation of the people and government of Eritrea to you, Mr. President, for organizing this important event to pay tribute to the memory of one of Eritrea's finest sons, Ambassador Grimas Morom, passed away last week after battling cancer for several months. I'd like to thank all of you who took the floor to honor and remember a colleague and friend who was close to many of you. We are very grateful and touched for your presence here today at this General Assembly Hall to pay homage to Girma. We welcome your words of sympathy and support that you have been expressing in person through phone calls, coming to our mission to sign the Book of Condolences, sending cards, and in the social media. This is indeed heartening and we believe befitting a person who never stopped from displaying warmness and friendship in the UN family. Mr. President, Ambassador Girma was a dedicated, tireless, passionate, and accomplished fighter for the rights of the Eritrean people for his entire adult life. Beginning in his student days here in the United States, through his years as a freedom fighter, and on to his last breath of his life as Eritrea's permanent representative to the United Nations. Girma had an unwavering faith in the Eritrean people and country whom he served with distinction. He was a champion not only of the cause of Eritrea, but for fairness and justice for all. His sharp mind, quick wit, diplomatic savvy, as well as selfless service and valuable contribution, contribution will be fondly remembered. In his diplomatic work here, in the United Nations, Gurma interacted with all members, including with those delegations he did not agree with. He saw no barriers but opportunities to engage. And engage he did with all to promote an inclusive peace for his country and the region. He was relentless in his endeavor and articulating the position and policies of his government, stressed the need for fairness and justice for the equality of states, and fought against double standards in all its forms. Girma kept in all of his conversations the importance of respecting the sovereignty of nations, the need to lift unjustified sanctions on developing countries, and the non-politicization of human rights. He furthered cooperation with member states and the UN system to promote these objectives. All the accolades and obituaries that have poured from his friends and colleagues portray a consummate person with exceptional qualities of compassion, valor, selflessness, personal integrity, hard work, and extraordinary resilience. Yet these adept descriptions do not convey the full stature of Ambassador Girma. His exceptional resilience is perhaps better captured in the dignified manner that he fought the cruel illness that affected him in the past six months. Girma never uttered a complaint, nor did he take a day of his duties in spite of this debilitating and malignant disease. Indeed, one of his last diplomatic functions was to communicate from Asmara in the middle of his treatment with and respond to the Somali Eritrea Monitoring Group, again to defend unjustified ac accusations against his nation. Ambassador Girma is a national hero who has devoted 45 years of his life to defend freedom and national dignity. His was a life well lived. His passing is, of course, a big and poignant loss to Eritrea. For me personally, he was a comrade in arms, a close friend and associate, 
as we had worked together with the Association of Eritreans for Independence in North America here in the United States, and joined the Eritrean People's Liberation Front, the liberation movement that led Eritrea's War of Independence together on the same day, and worked in the same department during the struggle. I only wish he had lived to see the injustices against his country redressed, injustices he fought against with utter conviction, boundless determination, consummate confidence, and always an unfailing sense of humor. But the struggle continues. And as we in Eritrea say, victory is always to the people. Awadna Hafash and An Nasru Lil Jamahir. I thank you. Lomendo, 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 The Somalia Eritrea Monitoring Group has concluded that, I quote, it has found no evidence of Eritrea's support to Al-Shabaab in Somalia. With regards to the disputes between Eritrea and Djibouti, the presidents of the two countries have entrusted the state of Qatar to mediate their disputes. Since the two justifications for the imposition of the unjust sanction against Eritrea are non-existent, the correct, logical, and legal action should have been for the UN Security Council to immediately and unconditionally lift the unjust sanction against Eritrea and terminate the mandate of the Somalia Eritrea Monitoring Group concerning the part of Eritrea. Any other pretext is unacceptable. It is a political agenda. <laughs> Thank you.